Good morning and welcome to another edition of the Morning Devotional. Today is Thursday, April 28th, 2022. This is edition number 162 of season four of the Morning Devotional. My name is Pastor William Hill. I'm the pastor of Providence Church, a congregation of the Presbyterian Church in America. We are located in Evansville, Indiana. If you'd like to find out more about our church, you can visit our website. That information will be available to you at the end of the video. Additionally, if these times um, uh, each day are of some benefit or profit to you, you can drop me a note, uh, leave me a comment. Um, again, you can contact me. The information to do that will be provided at the end of this devotional. Also, if, uh, if you uh, are so inclined and want to share this with other people, please do so. Um, I'd very much appreciate it. We are uh, still working our way through the Westminster Shorter Catechism. We come to the penultimate edition of season four. We are looking at Shorter Catechism question number 106 um, this morning. So let's pray first, and then we will take up this question and answer together. Father, as we now look at your word and as we consider these very important matters, we would pray that you would uh, be gracious to us, that your spirit would guide and direct us in all that we do, all that is said. We would ask that you would bless these times to the hearts and minds of your people and that you would use them to further glorify yourself and to help your church grow in their understanding and their grace and knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Please forgive us for our sins and the ways in which we fall short of your glory. We pray that you'd help us. Even now we ask for Christ's sake. Amen. Well, Shorter Catechism 106 now brings us to the final petition of the Lord's Prayer. And the question is, what do we pray for in the sixth petition? The answer is in the sixth petition, which is, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. We pray that God would either keep us from being tempted to sin or support and deliver us when we are tempted. Now, there are um, various ways in which this particular portion of this uh, of the Lord's Prayer is in, is translated. You may uh, find that your translation of the Bible says, "Deliver us from the evil one." Um, some translations say, "Deliver us from evil." Both are valid in, uh, translations of the original language. There, uh, it is not. Uh, it is deliberately ambiguous, um, leading either to just the generic expression of "Deliver us from evil," or the more specific expression, deliver us from the evil one. Both are, um, both are fine, and, and if you use one or the other, or if you interchange them, uh, you're not doing any violence to the scriptures uh, in doing so. But here, again, we are asking of God something, two things specifically as given in this answer. These are things that we should pray. Um, frankly, we should pray daily. Uh, we first pray that God would either keep us from be that God would keep us from being uh, tempted to uh, sin. Now, in Psalm 19 and verse 13, uh, the psalmist there, um, uh, David, uh, he writes, "Keep back your servant also from presumptuous sins; let them not have dominion over me. Then I shall be blameless and innocent of great transgression." And then in Matthew 26, there at the end of the minister, earthly ministry of Christ, shortly before he goes to the cross, um, there we read in Matthew 26, verse 41, we read, Watch and pray that you may not enter into temptation. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. Of course, this is Jesus praying in the Garden of Gethsemane. He is communicating these words to his three tired weary uh, disciples, and he in, in, implores them to watch and pray that, that they may not enter into temptation. And indeed, we do need to pray that. We, we need to pray uh, that we would not um, uh, be led into temptation and led into that situation in which we may uh, sin against God. We are to be watchful people. We are to pay attention to the efforts of the evil one. We are to pay attention to his devices, and we are to pay attention to his schemes. There's a wonderful Puritan book, Precious Remedies Against Satan's Devices, that I would commend to you to read. It gives a very um, a thorough treatment of the various ways in which our enemy, the enemy of our soul, seeks to ruin us. And then also in John 17, 
and in verse uh, 15, uh, we read uh, this. I do not ask that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from the evil one. Now, what is... Uh, what is uh, common to all three of these proof texts, these references, is that each one of them are, are, are framed within the context of prayer. In John 17, Jesus is praying his high priestly prayer. In Matthew 26, he tells us to pray, watch and pray, uh, so that you might not enter into temptation. In Psalm 19, David is praying. He is praying to the God of heaven, and he's asking that through his providence and his goodness and kindness, he might not lead us into a situation in which we are tempted to sin. Some may object and say, well, God doesn't do that. Well, uh, I would differ uh, uh, with that opinion. If you back up to Matthew chapter 4 and verse 1, we read there, then Jesus was led up by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. And so it is, uh, it is a right understanding of matters related to our temptation. That it is God who is the God of providence who uh, either leads us into those situations um, or keeps us from those situations. Uh, uh, more precisely, it is the Spirit of God that we depend upon who might protect us and help us in these matters. And so we would pray. We ask the Lord. We ask Him each day as we begin our day, as we go through our day, Father, may you not lead me into temptation. Uh, may I be watchful and uh, praying regularly and often that I might not succumb to the efforts of, uh, of the evil one. But not only do we pray that, but we also pray that if we are tempted, that God would support and deliver us when we are uh, tempted. In Luke 22... Uh, Luke 22 and verses um, 31 to 32, uh, we read of an event that happened in the life of Christ to Peter. There, Jesus says, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan demanded to have you that he might sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Now, we know this is a precursor to the denial of Christ that Peter makes. Uh, but what we note here is that um, because of the mediatorial work of the Lord Jesus Christ, um, Peter was prevented um, from his faith completely uh, becoming shipwreck or failing entirely. And, and of course, we know uh, from uh, the pages of the New Testament that the Lord Jesus Christ is mediating for us. He is interceding on our behalf on a regular basis. He ever makes intercession for us. And so as we pray and watch and pray, lest we enter into temptation, but when tempted, we know that we do have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. And he is pleading on our behalf, even as he did for Peter, he does for us. And so we depend on that. We're thankful for that truth because, of course, his prayers are always perfectly offered and perfectly received. We also have the comfort of the words that Paul gives in 1 Corinthians 10 and um, in verse uh, 13. Um, no temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. That is to simply say that when you are tempted to sin, it's not unusual. It's not unique, so unique that no other person has ever has has never been through this kind of matter. We know that the Lord Jesus Christ was tempted in all ways that we are, yet without sin. But no temptation that happens to you and me is such that is not common to man. But God is faithful, and he will not let you be tempted beyond your ability. But with the temptation, he will also provide the way of escape that you may be able to endure it. And so in times of temptation, we are asking for God to sustain us, support us, and help us during it. And we know from God's word that he does provide a means of escape. He provides it. Now, he doesn't yell and scream about it usually. It's sometimes subtle. Uh, sometimes it's right there in front of us, and we even know what it is, and then we choose to ignore it, even making things worse. But we need to be patient, and we need to look watchful, ever watching for those opportunities that God promises to provide in each case in which we are tempted and so it's not uncommon for us to be tempted as fallen creatures, but 
in that temptation, we can count on God's faithfulness to provide a way of escape that we might be able to withstand the efforts of the world, the flesh, and the devil. Hebrews chapter 2 also tells us there in verse 18, really should read the larger context, but I'll just read the last verse. For because he himself has suffered when tempted, he is able to help those who are being tempted. And so again, as I've already mentioned, the Lord Jesus Christ is acting on our behalf as that advocate. He is mediating for us. He is interceding on our behalf as we enter into these temptations. He either prevents us from being tempted entirely, or when tempted, he is pleading with his Father in heaven that he might uphold that, that, that the Spirit might uphold and sustain us. Now look, temptation is part of living in a fallen world. We are fallen creatures. We are, we are prone to temptation because of original sin, because of the reality that, um, because of the reality that we are indeed uh, sinners. And so we must recognize our great dependence upon the Holy Spirit that we might not fall or give in to our temptations. It's vitally important that we strain and fight and and mortify the deeds of the flesh that we might then be free. We might uh, not be entangled with these kinds of things. Uh, This is a daily battle. Uh, Each of you, if you're you're not privy or even aware of that battle, then um, perhaps you really should evaluate the foundation and ask yourself why. Because Christians wage war against Satan, the world, and the flesh. And part of the waging of war is temptation to sin. And thus, therefore, we are in desperate need of the Spirit of God to help us that we might be withheld, uh, upheld during those times. Well, I trust these times are helpful for you. If you have any comments or questions, you can leave me a note. The way to do that is there before you on the screen. And so until our final edition of Season 4, when we take up Larger Catechism Question 107, May the Lord bless you and keep you today. May you serve him. God bless.